Okay, guys, so in this question, I'm going to go through uh, one of the practical exams that you've done in the past. Um, this is from, uh, what year was it? Uh, this is from the 2010 uh, CIE practical exam. Uh, and we're going to go through it together, showing it step by step. So the first thing you're told is, uh, in this experiment, you will investigate the equilibrium position uh, of a suspended mass. The operator can set up as shown in figure 1.1. So we have a plumb line here, and you can see I have a matching plumb line hanging down here. Um, I also have uh, two nails marked here and here, and a spring between them. Uh, you're then told to measure the distance L between the two nails. So one of the things that people sometimes really struggle with in this um, is to work out where precisely to measure to. If you look, can you see this dotted line? This is in the centre of the nails. Um, so you're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to take my meter ruler, and I'm going to try to line it up so the end of it is dead centre of one nail, and I record to the end of the other nail. Always do a quick check to make sure you're reading off the scale. Um, sorry, if you're holding the ruler the wrong way around, um, you could get that wrong. Um, and this comes out, oh, look at that, it's exactly, exactly 63 centimetres. So I know it's 63 centimetres, and it was exactly that. So I would write that as 63.0 centimetres, because I need to show that I've measured to the nearest millimetre. But when I look at this, I can see that it's actually, uh, they want me to measure it in metres. So I'm then going to rewrite this as 0 0.630 metres. It's really important to measure that to the nearest millimetre. I'm then told to attach the crocodile clip to the string so the string passes through the gap between the jaws of the crocodile clip as shown in figure 1.2. So here's my crocodile clip, I've actually already attached this earlier. Um, and you can see it, it's got very clearly here this gap being measured. So one of the things that, that tells me, just from my experience, is that this should be free to move um, along this string back and forth. You're then told to suspend the mass hanger and masses from the loop attached to the crocodile clip. Adjust the crocodile clip so that the distance D from the plumb line to the string loop is about 30 centimetres, as shown in figure 1.3. Now, this is where you need, again, to read the instructions really, really carefully. So two things are going on here. Number one, I need to show that this distance D, it's the horizontal distance between uh, the plumb line and here. So it's going this way across. Um, and then it says is about 30 centimetres. When they say about... They mean exactly, so you should adjust this till it's exactly 30 centimetres. Now, in this particular question, they haven't given me a set square or anything else to make sure that my meter ruler is horizontal. So straight away, I'm going to back This could be a question that can ask me later. They might say, well, how can I make this more accurate? Or what's the potential source of error? Um, and a big one is, if my ruler is, I'm not going to exaggerate it here, but if my meter ruler is at an angle, that's going to reduce my accuracy. Um, so there's a couple of things they may have done in the exam to do this. Um, they could have given me a set square to measure things like this, or they could have given me a, uh, a spirit level so I can check it's exactly horizontal. But they haven't given me either So what I'm going to do instead is hold the plumb line still and just make sure that this end of the ruler here is flush uh, so it's up against this uh, string here. So that's actually already pretty close. Uh, I'm just going to so be careful not to squeeze my cock out of it because it's like that's going to cause me problems. Uh, and you can see it's a little bit fiddly here. So what I'm going to try to do is just work out what's the most accurate way I can hold this stuff um, and manipulate it. And I think it's going to be to uh, slide it with one hand. Let's try sliding it like that. Yeah, that kind of works. So it is fiddly. It's only will be a little bit fiddly. Um, but it's still worth taking the effort to try to get this as close to exactly 30 centimeters as you possibly can. Um, I don't think I'm going to get it to precisely 30 centimeters because it's quite challenging, uh, but I'm going to try and get close as I can. I'm still at 29, that's been quite frustrating. So now I'm just moving it in a very small increments. Trying to get right. There we go, that's exactly at 30. Now I'm going to get down there some low to make sure I'm at the same level as it as well. It's going to help me increase my accuracy. And once I've got each end lined up, yeah, that's, it. that's pretty much exactly there. So here D is, again I want this in metres, so 30 centimetres becomes 0 0.300 meters. Really important, again, that I'm recording to the nearest millimeter. Measure and record initial height H0 of the bottom of the massive bench, I'll show you 1.3. So again, put this against here. Um, and again, you can see that I've measured to the bottom of my masses. So I'm going to get down low and make sure that I am level with that. Um, I have a little bit of uh, oscillation, a bit bouncing up and down, so I'm just going to touch it gently to hold that still. And that looks to me like 7.2 centimeters. So my 7.2 centimetres, obviously writing that accurate, uh, writing that in metres, that becomes 0 0.072 metres. Okay, you're now told to reduce D by moving the crocodile clip closer to the plumb line. That means I'm going to be shifting it this way, up towards the plumb line. 
ensuring that the string passes through the gap as shown in figure 1.2. Again, you can see it's going to be there making sure that this is still able to slide backwards and forwards. Measure and record D and the new height H of the bottom of the masses above the bench. Repeat until you have six sets of values for D and H, with D in the range of 5 to 30 centimetres. So straight away I now know that my range is going to be 30 to 5. Um, and I'm also told to include values of L over 2 minus D all squared, and H minus H naught in your table. So um, I'm going to be control moving D. Uh, that's going to be my independent variable. That's going to be the first thing I put into my table. So there's D. And this is a length, so D is measured in metres. Notice I'm doing a slash, because that's the international standard for when we uh, give units. We always do a slash after the units. Uh, then measure record the new height H. So H, that is also going to be recorded in metres. Uh, and then you are also told to then include L over 2 minus D. So, all squared. So L... That's the one that I found earlier. L is my length between the, sorry, between the nail and the nail. So that is in meters. So working out the units for here, I've got something in meters divided by two. So that, and then I'm subtracting a D, which is also in meters, and all squaring it. So something in meters take away something in meters. That's going to become meters. If I say four meters divided by two, that's two meters take away one meter. That's one meter. And then I'm going to square it. So this is going to be in meters squared. And then I want h minus h0. Well, that's one distance take away another distance. So that's also going to be in meters. I'm just going to put some lines down here to split up my columns. And very usefully, the first thing I can do, the first set of values I can include, are from my previous uh, attempt at this. So I already have one value of d, which is 0 0.300, and one value of h, which is 0 0.072. Now, there are different schools of thought on whether you should calculate these as you go. I like to calculate uh, your values as you go, um, and hopefully I will show you why as we uh, get through this. A uh, little note for the future as well, um, I'm just going to write down here what L is, um, because that's just going to help me to uh, see that later. So my first one, um, and in fact, actually, just again, to make it even easier, I'm going to write down L over 2 is 0 0.315. So my first uh, value in here becomes 0 0.315 minus uh, 0 0.3. And then I want to square that. So that becomes 0 0.000225. And I can give this to three significant figures because D is to three significant figures. So I should give my answer to three significant figures. And then H take away H naught. Um, well, in this case, H is H naught, so that's going to be 0. Now when you think about how I'm going to split this up, um, I want to go, uh, so I've got uh, six sets of values. Um, so let's just start at, let's do, uh, I'm going to leave a gap so I can always do extra. Um, so let's do 0 0.250, 0 0.200, 0 0.150, 0 0.1010, 0 0.1010, 0 0.050. That's down to the minimum, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that gives me 6 values. Let's try that. So I'm now looking for a D of 0 0.25. Notice here, I've got uh, one fewer significant figure, um, but I need to be careful um, not to uh, go to too many, to, to few significant figures, sorry. Um, and I'm also going to write down H0 here, that is 0 0.072, sorry about that. So now looking through this, um, I'm just going to do a quick check that I've done this accurately. So I want to make sure that my D values, they're all to the nearest millimetre, which yes they are. Um, this is a calculated value using D, so all these are to three significant figures, which means that all these should be to three significant figures as well, which yes they are. And then H minus H naught, this is to two significant, then three sig fig, uh, my H naught is to two sig fig, so really this should be to two to three significant, oh, sorry, no, I'm actually, no, my significance is to be, this is just a raw one take away another. Um, so that looks to me 
um, like it is fine. Now I'm asked to plot a graph of L over 2 minus D squared on the y-axis. So let's just write that in straight away as I see it. So it is uh, L over 2 minus D all squared. I've already worked out the units for that. That is meters squared, that's on the y-axis, against H minus H naught uh, on the x-axis, and that is measured in meters as well. Okay, so I put this graph now. Um, uh, let's start with the uh, y-axis. Um, so the first thing I can say um, is my range is uh, 0.0702, take away 0.000225. Now I suspect that I'm going to start from zero on this graph. Um, that's because this value is very, very close to zero, this value gets a little bit higher. Um, so I think that's going to work out like that, but let's just try it. So that gives me a range of 0.067, let's just round it. Um, so really I want to go up by 8. Now I'm, I'm just, let's start off at 0 and let's see. Um, and just by inspection I'm going to say I want to go up to uh, 0.07. So let's try going up in 2s. Uh, so that would be, I'm going to start at 0 on this axis. So this would be, uh, let's go up in 0. Point, yeah, let's go up in 0. 0.0, 0, no, let's say let's go up in 0. 0.02. 004, 006, 008, that's rubbish, that's no good at all. Um, so drop down one, um, let's try going up in uh, 0.01s, so that'd be 001, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's going to be just over half my graph paper, so that's probably the best I can do. Uh, just time to check that. If we went up in 0005s, so that'd be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. We need to get 70, so that's not going to work either. So let's make that 001. Sorry. 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Okay, well, like I said, that's not going to be a brilliant graph. Um, no, I'm not changing stuff, is it? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, this isn't going to be a fantastic scale, but it's the best I can do. And then my h minus h naught. Again, I'm just going to start it straight from zero. I can tell straight away that that's going to work to go from zero. Um, and for this one, I want to go up in. Let's try. I'm going up to about twelve in this way. So let's try twos. Um, so that would be 0 0.02468, 10, 12. Yeah, that's going to work. Okay, let's get this plotted. Yes, I'm doing is just noticed uh, this third point here, this doesn't look right, so I'm just going to recheck that one. Um, so that will be 0 0.145 take away 0 0.072. Yep, so that should be 0 0.073. Just correct that. Right, and I'm going to lie my ruler down so that it's following the trend of my. Dots. You can see they're a pretty good straight line. I was doing this quickly, I'm quite pleased with that. I'm just going to move it up and down until I have about half the points above, half the points below. I'd say that's pretty good like that. Nice line of best fit through there. And I'm going to extend it so it meets, it meets both ends of my graph. Uh, now, if anything, I would say that line of best fit is probably a little bit... No, actually, no, I think that's a pretty good line of best fit. Pretty good line of best fit. So I've drawn my straight line of best fit. Now I need to determine the gradient and y-intercept. So, to determine the gradient, I'm going to start at this end up here, and I'm going to work my way down until I find a perfect spot uh, where it crosses through two lines. I would say that's there. Um, so, let's work out that coordinate. This is 0 0.14, 0 0.16 there. So, that will be uh, 0 0.158, and my y coordinate is uh, that's 0 0.9, sorry, 0 0.0, so that be 0 0.094. Notice I'm actually writing it straight on my graph. Here's another point that I just found there. Uh, I'm making it nice and big so you can see it, so you wouldn't do it that big. Um, so that would be 0 0.246, 0 0.006, and my y is 0 0.00123. So now I'm going to actually draw in my triangle. And I'm just going to do it as a full triangle, I think. You could do it as dotted lines as well, it's up to you. And then I'm going to mark in these values. So my what my change in y will be 0 0.094 take away 0 0.003, which is uh, 0 0.091. And then on my x-axis, 
That is uh, 0.158 take away 0 0.006, uh, which is uh, 0 0.152. So for here, to determine the gradient, I'm going to say gradient is equal to my rise over my run. My rise is 0 0.091, and I'm dividing that by uh, 0 0.152. So I plug that into my calculator, and I get... Uh, that comes to 0 0.599 to round it. I've got 3 sig fig here, 2 sig fig here, so I can give my answer to 3 sig fig. That becomes 0 0.599. Now, the y-intercept, this is important. My y-intercept is not where it meets the axis, it's where we go through zeros. It was, sorry, it's when, what the value would be when x is 0. Now, um, as you can see, I don't have a y-intercept. It's actually met the x-axis rather than the y-axis, even though I've gone through 0, 0 here. Um, so instead, I'm going to have to plug it into the form y is equal to mx plus c. Now, I can't, so I'm going to do a substitute into that equation. Now, I've already picked out one set of coordinates here, so I'm just going to use those. So I'm going to say that when y is 0 0.003, that is equal to my gradient, which I've just found, which is, sorry, 0 0.599, multiplied by my x value, which is 0 0.006, plus my intercept. So c will become uh, 0 0.003, take away this, so it becomes, take away, put my brackets around it, 0 0.599, multiplied by 0 0.006, and that becomes minus 0 0.000594. Um, now this is only to one significant figure, um, this is only one significant figure, so I'm actually only going to give this to one significant figure as well, so my y-intercept is minus 0 0.0006. Um, and that seems reasonable because it should be negative because I can see it does meet somewhere here below the axis. Okay. The relationship between D and H is L over L2 is minus D squared, sorry, L over 2 minus D all squared is equal to some value A multiplied by H minus H naught plus B, where A and B are constants. Using your answers from D part 3, determine the values of A and B and give appropriate units. So looking at this, well, L minus D all squared, that is what I plotted on my y-axis. H minus H naught, that is what I plotted on my x-axis. So A must be equal to my gradient. And B must be C, which is my intercept. So... For A, A is really simple. A is just the gradient, which is equal to uh, 0, what was it? 0 0.599. Now, this is where it gets a bit trickier. Um, what I can say is L over D, sorry, L minus L over 2 minus D all squared, that has units of meter squared. And what I can say is the units on this side of the equation have got to be equal to the units on this side of the equation. So I'm going to need to uh, do some calculation here. I'm going to need to say, um, what must A be being multiplied by? So I'm saying that this is in meters. So what do we need to multiply to get something in meters squared? Therefore, uh, this must be in meters. So I'm getting some constant in meters, multiplied by a value which is in meters, that will give me meters squared. That's enough for meters squared as well. So A is 0 0.599 meters squared. And B, well, I'm adding two things together, and generally in physics we can only add things that have the same unit. So B is my y-intercept. Um, which I calculated as minus 0 0.0006, and that should also be in meters. There you go, guys. I hope that makes sense to you, um, and I'll see you later.